So we've got little Red Riding Hood here. This is Kendra. Hi. And we are going to kind of tell a story. So Kendra's delivering something in here. Not sure what it is. Actually, we do know what it is. This is the red velvet cake. That's the part of our theme for the shoot. So a couple things we need to do in preparation. We're going to shoot a color check of passport, so we have a color reference. And I'm going to meet her. Now the sun's starting to get a little low, and the story is she's delivering the basket to you know who. Grandma. Grandma, yes. So the first thing I want to do before the sun gets too low behind the trees is I'm going to get a meter reading. So I'm just going to get right here, and I'm getting 80th of a second at F5, 400 ISO, and that's a 50% flash fill. Normally a little more than I like, however, she is kind of in deep shadow here because of the trees. So I think we can go with that just fine. I'm using a single flash through a shoot through umbrella because the sun's actually right over that way. It's coming through the trees and this is going to simulate kind of a diffuse sun coming all over on her. I've got the flash just off to the side so it will create a little bit of a ratio. And the 50% of flash should work pretty well, but let's take a shot, all right? So first I'm going to do the color checker with these settings and then we'll put it to work. Awesome. Ready? So just hold that for me for a second. All right, Kendra. Let me just get in close to the target. Hold it a little flatter towards me. Yeah, like that. That's good. Beautiful. That's all we needed. All right, so get your basket. It is still here. Oh man, that, that is lovely actually already. Just so you can see already, it looks like the sun. Wow, yeah, that's great. All right, so what I want you to do is go back to that other hill. Yep. And I want you to start walking slowly and kind of you're looking around. You're, you're, you're going to grandma's house, okay? So take a couple of steps, just walk slowly and look towards me a little. Nice. Now, do the same thing again. Nice. Again. All right. Look right here. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. One more. Turn a little sooner. All right, go. Now turn. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Very that cool looks stuff. So, good. so, what did we just learn? Yes, I do usually use a 50% flash fill when part of my subject is in deep shadow. Like we see at beach shoots, if, say, the sun was over here, I would use a 50% flash fill on the side of the face that is mostly away. So, if the, if the sun di direction is maybe 70 degrees off of her nose, 50% flash fill works. In this case, with the shoot through umbrella, it actually looks like the sun coming through the trees, yeah, didn't it? Exactly. So it really looks natural, looks great. So it's starting to get a little darker. So I think it's time to find another location because you got to get a little closer to grandma's house. Oh, All right, you ready? Okay. <laughs> so we got some great shots. It really looked like the sun, didn't it? Yeah. So we were at 40 to 50% light from the shoot through umbrella. Now the sun's getting a little bit lower. The light's going to start to become a little bit more dramatic and a little more directional. So I'm switching from an umbrella into a beauty dish. Now, if you've never seen a beauty dish like this before, it's no surprise because I made it from stuff I got at Walmart. This is like an $8 beauty dish. It was just a fun project. Uh, but what the beauty dish is going to do is it's going to be more focused kind of light it's and it's going to have a much harder fall off. Typically used for portraits, but I'm going to use it more as a fill to simulate the directional sun. And the other beauty about this is it doesn't matter what flash you're using. We are completely shooting on manual. And just to prove that, I pulled out a flash I have had for about 14 years. This is a, an old Nikon SB28DX. Doesn't really matter what it is because I've got a sync cable that is going to go into the side of the flash, connect it to my radio trigger, and that's it. The meter is going to give me the percentage. I'm going to probably think maybe a little bit less now, maybe 30% flash fill, but let's try it and see what looks best. So we have our beauty dish that's going to act kind of simulating the sun that's coming down through the trees. Really it's doing the same thing the sun is doing, but what it's going to do for Kendra is it's going to open up her eyes a little and it's going to give us a nice catch light right here. Uh, we already did some from the side with the umbrella as kind of she was heading this direction. Now we're going to have her facing back into the sun. So since she's facing into the sun, it's a gentle fill flash. We just want 30% for that. 
and again, that's what the meter does. Uh, by the way, I'm using uh, Fotix Aries triggers. I've got one on top of my camera, which is a Sony a7R II, and I just set the Sekonic in waiting mode, put the button, or hit the measure button on the side, hit the test button on my trigger, and it gives me a number. And we see, let's see, it says F7, actually I'm gonna go 6'3", hundredth of a second, ISO 400, at 6.3 gives us a 30% fill flash, which is gonna look really natural. You ready? Yep. Okay, let's do that. Beautiful. I'm gonna come in a little over here. Look right, all right, look at me. Chin up a little. Nice. That's nice. Beautiful. All right, grab the basket. Nice. Oh yeah. Okay, don't move anything. Eyes right at me. Right into the lens. One of the beauties of having a system like this is once I meter the light to my subject, I can move anywhere I want. I've got a long lens. I've actually got my house behind her. In fact, let me go ahead and take a quick shot and we'll see the house behind her, which isn't very flattering. We don't, she's in the middle of the woods. She's not at my house. So I'm gonna move a little bit. But the beauty is, since the distance of the light to her is never changing, I can go anywhere I want. I don't have to remeter her because all the light that's hitting her is coming from that flash. And that's lovely. That's really nice. All right, Kendra, look up a bit. Tilt your head up a little. Tilt. Yeah, right there, good. Nice, gentle smile. Now you're starting to get maybe a little concerned. Kind of look off to one side a little bit, yeah. Let me come in a little closer. Bring the basket lower and hold it in both hands. Yeah, that's good. Now bring your hand, one hand up kind of like this. Don't actually touch, yeah. But bring it over on this side a little more. Yeah, right there. Beautiful. She's gonna be a movie star. So what's going on is the sun's getting very low. As the sun continues to get lower and lower, we're gonna need more flash. But since we need to simulate maybe a little bit of light coming through the trees or soon the moon, which is gonna be rising, we need to keep that light much more focused. So I'm gonna to continue to use the beauty dish at first, but I'm gonna bring it very close to her and bring down the power. Then we're gonna work into going to a snoot. We're gonna have a light very directional, so it's illuminating her face and we're gonna simulate the moonlight with that. And then we're all gonna have to also do a little bit of special effects stuff. We're gonna hide some flashes to get kind of a supernatural look. We're gonna put a flash in the basket with a radio trigger so that when we pop our lights, this one will also light up as well. And we have a fog machine over on the side. We're gonna get the fog going. We'll use some gels and then uh, we'll add a little special guest later. You ready? Oh, by ready. the way, do you like red velvet cake? Oh, a lot. Okay. so. We're gonna to get to the red velvet cake too. So we let's adjust the lights. I'm gonna bring it in close. I'm not sure what the percentage is. It's probably gonna be close to 60 or 70% because it's almost the only light, but I just wanna light her and have that light fall off as it goes down her body. All right, let's give it a try. All right, it's getting more dramatic. We've got very little light left. It's starting to get dark. A little red over here, starting to get a little nervous. So we've got a little bit of sun coming from this direction. We're gonna simulate it with the beauty dish coming in. I'm gonna have Kendra looking over her shoulder like she thinks maybe she's being followed. I've got the beauty dish fairly close, so it's gonna illuminate mostly right here. We're going for dramatic lighting. Now the beauty dish is providing 80% of the light, uh, which is okay because it's getting pretty dark out. In fact, even at that, we're up to 800 ISO at a hundredth of a second. And I'm shooting at F4 because I want a very narrow depth of field. I don't wanna have this stuff in the background and focus. So those are the numbers. You ready? You feeling ready. scared? You getting scared? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you're a little more scared now. Yeah, that's it, good. Yes. Okay, now eyes up towards your mother again. This is fun. This it's is fun, fun stuff. If you make it fun, it's fun. Yeah, and you know what? And that, you actually bring up a good point. Well, just taking a picture of someone is one thing, mm -hmm. but we're trying to create a whole story and it just adds so much more life to the portrait, and that's what we're doing here. Now, I went DIY again. That's short for doing it yourself. Yeah. Okay. If you look right up here, I've got a downspout adapter that I picked up in Lowe's, and I sprayed it with black just because. I didn't have to, but just to keep the light inside. This becomes an excellent snoot. 
What it's gonna do is it's gonna focus this light instead of the beauty dish, which was illuminating probably three quarters to a half of her body. Now, just by doing this, I'm gonna get the light right here and that's it. So now we're gonna kind of ask the viewer to do a little bit of suspension of disbelief because you're gonna be wondering where this is light coming from. Well, we're going a little bit supernatural now because it's getting darker. In fact, it's, if the sun is not set, it's pretty close to where at dusk now. So all of our light is being created here to tell our story. So we're gonna get a couple of shots. Kendra's nervous now, or I'm sorry, Little Red is nervous right now because she's following her. So we're gonna use the light just to illuminate her face to show what's going on on her emotions. And it's gonna all be part of the story. You ready? Oh, I love it. Bite your, uh, bite your lip. Like you get, you know, like you would, if you were nervous, yeah, like you'd start to bite your lip a little bit. Yes, perfect. Oh, this girl's gonna be a star. I can already see it. If I can keep her from cracking up for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> What's really cool about this is my shutter speed on the camera is now at a 15th of a second, and I'm shooting at, oh, about 180 millimeters. Get their tack sharp, why? because almost 100% of the light is coming from the flash. And the flash duration is only about a thousandth of a second. If I want to open up the background a little bit more, I can slow down even more. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to see how far I can go. I'm at a 15th, I'm going to come down to a sixth of a second just to see what happens. And it actually works fine. Why? Because the flash duration is fine. The background's out of focus, but it's out of focus anyway, which is what I'm after. So I just focus on her, and that is really gorgeous. Just as a game for myself, I'm gonna come down to a half of a second exposure. And it still works. And all that happens is, by changing the shutter speed, I'm letting more light in from the background. I'm gonna back off a little bit. Let's go from a half to, we'll go to a quarter of a second. We'll cut it in half and see what happens there. Still works, that's really nice too. Kendra, look right at the lens, look right at me. Chin down and sh drop your shoulder that's closer to me. Lean this way a little bit. Now turn back to your mom. Beautiful, right there. Love it. Nice. All right, you ready, Red? I'm ready. Yeah, it's getting a little more ominous. It's getting a little darker out. We're throwing a little bit of supernatural in right now because the, we don't know where the lights are coming from. There's just glowing things off in the distance. Yeah. We're using our little uh, homemade snoot again. That's gonna send the light to Kendra's face. In the back, about, oh, about 20 yards behind me, I have uh, an Aries hooked up to another flash that is shooting up into the tree. And what I wanted to do is to just add a little bit of a glow behind her. Now I'm gonna take a meter reading back towards the flash here. And I'm getting 6.3, 400 ISO at a 15th of a second. And that is 17, 70% flash. So that's pretty good. Let's give that a try. 15th of a second. It's actually a little lighter out here yet than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, but that's good, because it's gonna open the background. Also, I'm gonna shoot down a little bit lower. I'm gonna get a little different feeling. When you shoot up at someone, it puts them in a little position of power, rather than shooting down on them. So now your attitude's starting to change. Now she knows she's being followed by something or someone, and rather than being afraid, she's starting to prepare. Okay? All right, let's do it. Oh, that's pretty cool. So we're gonna to move to one last location before we go up, up into the fog machine. Uh, but Kendra's attitude is changing now, as we said. And what I did was I changed the mood of the scene by adjusting the shutter speed. I went all the way down to a quarter of a second. It actually made the background a little too light because we wanna get more ominous. So I brought the shutter speed back up to about a 60th of a second, which made everything go very dark. And we just had the light on Kendra's face. And over behind that tree, again, about 20 yards behind, I've got a flash at 1 8 power that's just sending some light kind of slightly backwards into the brush and the rocks to add just a little bit of interest going on back there. By doing that, that creates more of a sense of separation. It causes more of a 3D effect since I have a light here and a light way back there. So let's get you on the road and then it's time for fog.
All right, let's do a test. So once again, I got our flash. It's about, what would you say that is, 10 feet? It's about 10 feet away from Kendra. Off to the side a little bit. I just want to put a little directionality on it. I measured it. It gave me 6.3. It was 90% of the light. 6.3, 800 ISO at a 40th of a second. Again, it's going to freeze the action. Also, right behind her, I'm just kind of hanging around the corner here, I've got another flash with another trigger. It's on 1 8th power, and I have it coming right up her back because I want it to create a shadow going forward. Now we're adding, starting to add a little bit of a supernatural element to it. The lights are the light. Only 10% of the ambient light is coming in. But again, it's getting more dramatic. Kendra's, sorry, Little Red. Little Red. <laughs> Little Red is taking on a little different attitude. She knows something's following, but now she is preparing herself to deal with it. Okay, you ready? So we get a couple shots here. She's got some tricks in her basket. And uh, after we do here, we're gonna go set up in the back with the fog and she's gonna get her little red superhero outfit on. Okay, let's try it. I'm sorry, but this is just too cool. Nice. Chin down a little. Rotate your body this way a smidge. Okay, so we've got Little Red Werewolf Hunter now. Now she's ready for some action. Fierce. She's fierce now. So what we're gonna do, I've got one over here that's gonna go through the fog machine. It's got a blue gel on it. We've got our friend, this, the flash and the snoot that's gonna illuminate her face. In her little basket here, if you look at the basket, the basket turns red from the flash. And the only reading in this case I really need to take is the light in the snoot that's gonna be hitting her face. All these lights in the back, in general, you can put them on about an eighth power and you're good to go because they're not directly illuminating her face. So let's measure the snoot and let's start shooting and finish this thing and get to our cake. <laughs> you ready for cake? It's my favorite. All right, let's go. <laughs> So once again, what a great shoot. The only way we were able to pull it off, yes, once again, we had the meter. It gave us the exact numbers. It allowed us to see the percentages, and there was no guessing. We got our shots when we were ready, and only your measuring cup here, your light meter, can make that happen. So let's head back to the studio.